What is up, brothers and sisters? Welcome back to another episode of the Vessels Podcast. If you are new with us, we just want to say what's up and welcome. We hope you love this and that it's beneficial for you. My name is Jeremy and I am the host of this podcast. And if you did not know, the Vessels Podcast is brought to you by the Ask Us Why Christian Apparel Line. But this podcast is a roundtable style discussion between me and my good friends, Christian, Connor, and Ali, where we talk about topics and relevant issues from a biblical perspective and try and address issues that we believe are important for us to understand as we continue to grow in our faith. With that being said, we hope you love this episode. You guys can actually be a part of Ask Us Why in a lot of different ways, but one cool way with our podcast is you can subscribe to our email list. And on our email list, we always send out a follow-up email regarding the topic that we talk about in these episodes so that you can continue to do the research and continue to learn about these topics beyond our podcast because we want to encourage and enable you guys to be able to do these things on your own. It's not about just listening to a couple opinions. This is about learning the the practice of studying and understanding things that God believes are important that we should also believe are important as well. So with that being said, we hope you guys love this episode. Make sure you subscribe to our email list and we hope you enjoy. Let's jump into it. How are we doing today, boys? It's Blake and Sado. You're sad? No, tired. Sorry, my bad. I think so. I think that's tired. Yes. But only right now. Just telling Connor, usually when we're headed over here, I'm like, ah, oh, so excited for a nap when I get back. <laughs> when I get back, I'm awake. <laughs> yeah. Dang. I always do that with work. Well, you see that with work. Wake up super early and you're like, cannot wait to sleep after work. Get off work and you're like, I can't sleep. No point now. I'm awake. No nap for you. Connor, how are you doing? Oh, man. What a day it is, you know. Got Thanksgiving tomorrow. Uh, go on a little trip Friday. And uh, go back to work on Monday, you know. <laughs> I can't tell if this is like Russian or if this is like a Mexican it accent. It is whatever you want it to be, okay? This gives more Russian vibes for sure. A little mafia. Little bit of a Russian vibe. You lived in small town Yashkinov with me. Yes. Yashkinov. We go way back. Your mother is Very Vladimir. <laughs> that sounds like a man's name. <laughs> in Russia, women have same name as men. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> Never been to Russia, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Where the heck is Ali? I'm sitting alone up here because you're across from me now. Where the heck did Ali go? Uh, here's the thing. She doesn't like us anymore, so that's fine. We are moving on. Oh, yeah. All right. Just for this week. No, yeah, that, that, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. I heard a rumor that she got shipped off to boarding school, so that I just didn't know if that was the truth or not. Connor, did you send she'll her? She'll learn something finally. Yeah, did you send her to boarding school? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I make all of her life decisions for what's, her. What's what's that school that? They used to send women to to become good, like women, like household, like ha- like wives and stuff. I don't know. There's a school that they were sent to to do that. Hogwarts. <laughs> <laughs> the only school that I'm aware of that does any kind of disciplining action is Hogwarts University. Is it Hogwarts University or is it just Hogwarts? Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. You're so right. Um, heck yeah. Uh. You guys, can you smell the pine? What the rock is cooking. Can you smell the pine under the tree as it falls it's to the ground? It's called a finishing school. Finishing a school. school for young women that focuses on teaching social graces and upper class cultural rights. Yeah, Ali was there or is there. If you would have just said finishing school, I would have thought that that was something related to like WWE. With like how to finish a KO. Finish him. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to finish him school. <laughs> if you ever need to get in a fight with your husband, learn how to finish him. <laughs> Just oh um, can you guys? Can you guys smell the pine? Can you smell it? Do you smell the firewood crackling? I can't smell mm. much at the moment. 
Do you <laughs> do you hear the sound of little children singing? Deck the halls with. There's nope. just little children singing at Remy's house all day long. They're not my children, though. Let's just clarify that. that I am not the fa- I am know. not the father. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You are not the father. Um, yeah, so this episode, a little bit different than the rest. Welcome, everybody that's joining us on uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, or on a YouTube. Um, guys, when this episode drops, it'll already have been after Thanksgiving. So mm-hmm. all of the chaos, all of the turkey stuff in, all of the stomach stuff in, all of the drama, everything will have passed away and the new shall come. And by new, I mean... Just the same weight game until Christmas to have to deal with it again. Um, <laughs> but uh, holidays can be a mixed bag for people. It can be a mixed bag for sure. Oh, yeah. Um, but uh, I would love for us to just kind of chat about that today. Chat about some uh, some thoughts going into this season. Try and get into the season mode. Um, understand the reason for the season if you know what i'm saying Mm. and uh on top of that i want to blast off some questions to you guys just for fun just to kick us off get us a little bit of energy in this room you know what i'm saying because i can definitely tell that we're at like a four out of ten right now yeah and the people are feeling it we need to get going yeah come on all right uh here's a real question i need to know the honest truth and 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 and, and, yeah nailed it (laughs) cut I need to ask you guys a question. I need the truth and nothing but the truth. Is it a real tree or a fake tree? Mm. Which one is your preference? Real. Real? Uh, I just always done real, but I definitely would probably get a fake. <laughs> I technically am not allowed to have a real tree in my apartment. Why? Uh, because it's messy. ECU is the best. <laughs> Let's just They've it. brainwashed him. <laughs> you, they can't give any other answer except GCU I, is the best, and so I love much Brian work to Mueller. have a real tree. Okay, but does that? Why would that be like bad for students? Is it because it's a mess and like you're dropping? No, them? we don't even trust students with carving pumpkins, which I agree with. Because here's the thing: they're kind of dumb sometimes, and when I say sometimes, I mean most of the time. Is it more that they just don't want to have to deal with like the medical needs that might come from that? Because no, I'm like, they they're just, not liable. They leave the pumpkins there until they rot, and then they leave them there more. And then Everybody when we that. go do their rooms. Yeah, I did that on my front yard. Health and safety <laughs> checks. Yeah, but that's outside. <laughs> they don't have front porches or back back. They technically porches. do, but <laughs> it's so just in they a just leave rotting rotting things, whether it be pumpkins or you know, their laundry they haven't done two months or their dishes that are just piling up in the sink. So I agree that we should not let. But like, <laughs> don't they got to learn to live in their fill so they can get out of it? No, they don't learn. bro. <laughs> <laughs> they do not learn. No. Oh, all right. Well, I guess I don't know how a Christmas tree is different. I mean, maybe like it'll die in their, yeah. their apartment and then it just sits if there for the Christmas trees like sets on fire. Remember what? Like, Baddy fire hazard. <laughs> I can get that. I just, I'm trying to think of like how a fire would start from it. Cause I mean, like Christmas lights. I mean, unless Dude. you're putting like open like wires on it. Knows. Bro, but we had know. to, uh, we had to ban, not we, but GCU had to ban. <laughs> Connor was involved. <laughs> they don't have humidifiers starting next semester because so, too many people don't know how to use them. So they were setting off all the fire alarms. That's <laughs> yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. We love to hear that. <laughs> GCU students <laughs> screwing it up once again. Can never get anything right. Killing it for the rest. This of is us. why we can't have nice things. The only thing that we do right is we bleed purple, and we show up to the havoc events, and uh, we know how to have a good time at Midnight Madness. That's about as far as it goes. <laughs> Outside of that, we got a lot of things to work on, guys. <laughs> Welcome to college. <laughs> um, so, are you a real tree or are you a fake tree? Uh, my family's always just had fake trees. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Grew up always having a real tree every year in Oregon. I'm sure you were the same way, right? Mm-hmm. Went and yeah. dropped it down like in the forest. Yep. See, but that's because up there it's like ten dollars for a tree because yeah. they're like, get it off my lot. Over here, no, no, they're no, like, like, like in the forest. Oh, are you just going into the forest? You're no, not going to like family. a farm? No, we don't have oh. a farm. Like forest, forest. Like oh, okay. Straight up, it was crazy. Nice. Just cut yeah. down like a thirty foot tree. Yeah. Our, the first year we did it, we definitely got a tree that was 
so big and mm. fell, it fell over like twice too in our house. It's like a elf when they go into the park and they cut down the tree <laughs> yeah. and they try to squeeze it yeah. into the house. The, the problem with the one in the forest is like they aren't nearly as like bushy as yeah. the one. So it's kind of tough, but kind of cool that you literally went to the forest and cut it down. It's more the experience of doing that than totally. Treats. The real question is, did you use an axe or did you use a chainsaw? Uh, a regular saw. Oh, regular saw. saw. I just I didn't even think about a regular yeah. saw. A mechanical saw? What's that? Never heard of it. <laughs> <I know. laughs> um, but right. yeah, like in in like places like that, it's way easier to access that. But here in Arizona, you can. So like a, yeah. re, a real tree is going to cost you anywhere from like $50 to $100. Yeah, just stupid. for like a seven foot tree. Stupid. Now, don't even think about it. Don't even let that thought cross your mind. The thought police are coming for like an eight and a half foot real tree <clears throat> in Arizona for under $100. You're psychotic. Crazy. So I I am also an advocate for fake trees. As much as I love real trees, I also love not having to like hassle over the management of it and stuff and just it makes it so easy. Yeah. And with like lights already like put into it, it just gets more and more convenient every day. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Um, what's yeah. your guys' favorite Christmas tradition? Mm-hmm. I'm going to throw some uh, Christmas music behind this while we do this. Be a little fun. That's great. Um. Well, for both Thanksgiving and Christmas, yeah, um, on the Who's Felt side of the family, we do this like Danish song called On Skaliva. I think I mentioned this last podcast episode. You did. <laughs> and then we take a shot, which is like super cool. Um, what else? Oh, <laughs> you guys, this one's so cool. Um, so we get like all the kids from the family, basically. Basically, everyone lines lines up in a circle around the Christmas tree. Usually, it turns into like two or three layers of a circle because there's a lot of us. Mm-hmm. Room's not always super big. And we sing Christmas songs for a little bit, and then at the very end, we sing jingle bells. And when jing- we sing jingle bells, Santa Claus comes in with a fatty thing of presents and sits down and gives presents to all the kids. And so, like, like legit. And last year, I almost got volunteered to be Santa. Dodge a bullet on that one. Why would you have to volunteer to be Santa? Well, because it's one of the guys in the family every year who does it. One year, I think real Santa it, doesn't come. <laughs> no, it's not Christmas yet, dude. Oh, you're right. Yeah, so somebody's got to fill in for him. But I think, honestly, I think one year a girl did it, like one of, <laughs> like one of the moms, as like a joke. And whenever, yeah, it's just, yes. It's so do the funny. kids know that it's a joke, or do they? Um, up to a certain age, but a lot of them have no clue. For a while, for a couple of years, like I had no idea. Yeah. Why does Santa have such a womanly voice? Like <laughs> when it's when, Mrs. Claus. Yeah. When my dad Santa's did it, busy. I think that's buying a Mercedes. I was like, "You're my dad." <laughs> <laughs> You're my dad. You're not my dad. Boogie, boogie, boogie. All right, that's funny, Connor. What's your uh, what's your favorite tradition outside of your 20 minute speech that you give? Yeah, I honestly don't know if we have a lot of family holiday traditions. Uh, so thanks family. Um, yeah, I honestly can't think of them because (laughs) my holidays look different as a split family, like every single year in terms of like where we're at and what we have to do, um, for like me and my brother who are like in the middle. So tradition is you always have to split your time each day. Tradition is we are going to like three or four places like every major holiday. That's so. awful. And with gas prices nowadays, oh, that's yeah. just a, that's just a burden on you. Tomorrow we have me and Allie are going to three separate houses throughout the day. Jeez. <laughs> for oh yeah, that's right. Now you have another person. Mm-hmm. Dang, that's a lot. Dang. Well, my hey Connor, or I mean Cooper. <laughs> Cooper get out of here. Connor, sit. Cooper, go lay down. Be, be, oh no. <gasps> Cooper, grab boy. it. Hey. You need to lay down. Oh, goodness gracious. Lay down. Um, yeah, my fa- in my family, we have a lot of tradition where um, we uh, we watch It's a Wonderful Life. Have you guys heard of that movie? Yes. It's yes. an old one. It's an oldie, but it's such a goodie. It's such a good film to watch. <laughs> I love it. Uh, we watch that every year, and it's pretty awesome. But uh, that's that's about as far as it goes for tradition for us. We don't really do anything else. My, Used to my, eat gingerbread, but not anymore. Thanksgiving, we all watch um, Home Alone. Nice. What's your guys' yeah. favorite Christmas movie then? Elf. <laughs> Duh. Elf. Yeah, like, I feel no. like there's pretty much one answer here. Without a doubt. 
Yep. Favorite quote from Elf. I guess that's a better question then. <laughs> Buddy the Elf, what's your favorite color? <laughs> I'm singing. <laughs> I'm singing. <laughs> There's a lot in that movie that's just gold. Can't uh, you can't get past it? I think one of my favorites is him uh, walking into the store and he's like, "Congratulations, you did it! Best cup, cup of coffee, coffee. Yeah. in the world! Congratulations!" <laughs> Just <laughs> you're an angry elf. <laughs> Must be from the south. <laughs> oh man, so good. All right, we got we had the, we had a little fun with that. We didn't get through all the questions, but that's okay. Um, all right, moving into this like holiday season. Uh, you just got to sit back and wonder, what is the true reason for the season? Why do we celebrate Christmas? Do you guys know the traditions of our founding fathers of Christmas and pagan celebrations? Do you guys know why Christmas exists? So that uh, as a split family, you get more presents. That's a fact. Stoked for that. This do we year. have any better answer than that? <laughs> <laughs> for our audience that's listening. <laughs> I know Saint Saint Nick has something to do with this. Saint Nick is just not the name of just a fictional character. Not fictional. Not a fictional character. Um, and so he's probably was some sort of uh, I don't know Roman Catholic priest who handed out gifts to and was giving to the homeless and the needy mm. for some reason. For some for some odd reason or another. Uh, Probably because I mean, has it always been assumed that like have, has Jesus's birthday always been celebrated on the twenty fifth of December? Has it always been celebrated? Like I don't know these. I don't know. These I would answers. say yes, as far as like a holiday dedicated to that. Okay. I don't think there's another day that's been dedicated to that, mm-hmm. but that's kind of like how it is. I don't believe that Christmas started off being a celebration for Jesus's birth. But then I think that it became a tradition within that because it was already a pagan tradition for that. Mm. Um, but I guess like so the, the reason that we obviously celebrate Christmas is because of Christ. Right. And like his birth. Um, but we are living in a culture now where we see all over the news that Christmas might be ruined this year because we're having huge delays with product being shipped over because we have extreme backup and low employee staff and Mm -hmm. a lot of complications around like the, the cargo containments um, and fulfillment centers for those matters. So like we're already living in like a world where the Christmas no longer has the meaning that originally had and it, and it lives for something else. So like how, how do we like combat this consumerism mindset of the holidays because it can be really easy to like get super excited for the holidays right and it's not like a bad thing like you want to like get excited for um you know the 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 christmas tree the decorations the getting to hang out with family the gifts you know the the driving around and seeing other people's christmas lights like there's a lot of fun things you can do and get excited about but like is there is there a danger to getting too excited about those things like is there is there something that maybe we're missing as christians that we need to be careful about uh i think something that most people can relate to when it comes to like holidays and especially christmas is <clears throat> feeling like you should be restful in this season, but mm-hmm. it ends up being like one of the most stressful seasons like of the year. Yeah. And I don't think that's the way that really any season should be, but especially, you know, one that we're trying to celebrate the birth of our savior. And so I think something, <clears throat> cause here's the thing. I think as much as we like want to as Christians to try and like have everybody see the, the meaning as it should be like mm-hmm. with Christmas, like you, you can't change everybody's mind. Like, you know, the Holy spirit does that and softens hearts. Um, but I think we try to do that sometimes and that can make it worse. I think, uh, in certain ways. So I'm not saying like, don't try to tell, you know, family and friends the true meaning of Christmas. Cause that's essentially the gospel, obviously right. preach the gospel. But I think something that can be equally as important is, like whatever your Christmas season looks like or holiday season looks like, like bringing peace into those situations um, and trying to have like a, a circumstance, a situations of like restfulness. Yeah. Um, because I know with like 
broken families like mine, like in some ways, like it's hard to look forward to like big holidays like Christmas because it's just like, oh, I got to go here and then I got to drive all the way over here and then I got to have, you know, two hours with this side of the family and then I got to go across the valley, you know, an hour to this place. And Mm -hmm. it's like, it's like not restful in some situations for me. So I think year after year, my outlook on it changes negatively, which Mm. isn't, you know, anybody's fault but my own. Right. Um, And so I think understanding that the peace that we bring um, into our families, especially, I mean, every family's broken, but especially like split families yeah, um, is huge because I think already so many of our family members are so stressed out about, you know, cooking and getting presents for everybody and hosting and all of these things. And if we're just adding to that, um, it just makes the day so much more stressful. And that's why I think the meaning gets lost so much is because, Mm -hmm the enemy wants us to think about all these other things instead of the true meaning. And Mm -hmm. so he's just distracting us with presence and with hosting and with cooking all these things. And then it's like the day's over and we haven't actually sat down and, you know, contemplated what the true meaning of this is. Yeah. Um, And I think he's done, the enemy has done, you know, a good job of that as Mm -hmm. much as we don't want to give him credit. Like we are falling into those things, even as Christians. Um, And so how important is it, to us to obviously bring the gospel, but even more create peace in our families in the places we're at um, so that others can, can actually see the true meaning. Yeah. What do you think, Christian? My mind. (laughs) (laughs) That's all good. I went down a rabbit hole. Um, (laughs) um, But because I had, I was, had a couple of thoughts about this. Um, you know, first and foremost, I was like, man, obviously consumerism is, is a big thing around the holiday season with, with gifts and whatnot. And, yeah. and, um, specifically in regards to like, man, just like how I was raised, like, like I got a lot of presents from my, not always my, my parents, but like my grandparents and stuff like that. And so you're always loaded at Christmas, weren't you? Dude, I had so many presents when I was little. Um, which was <laughs> like so sick. Um, so you loved Christmas, dude. I was so excited Christmas morning. <laughs> it was crazy, bro. Um, but like, so it kind of just got me thinking like about how, you know, kind of the responsibility that we have towards, you know, in the future, like our, our children and like how I, how I would want to raise them and like yeah. the gifts that we give them and, and maybe it's not always like it's not always the circumstances that we're in, but like how we choose to to view them and the mindset we have going into them. Like like Connor was saying, like having to travel different places, like you mm. can get really stressed out and um, not super appreciative of mm. like the fact that you have like the number one the ability to like even celebrate this as a holiday, um, but also like to love and be with your family um, and an opportunity to like spend time oftentimes with, with family members that you don't really get to see very often yeah, and who they also probably never really get to experience and interact with Christians, Mm -hmm. um, especially in a consistent manner year over year. Um, and if they get to experience maybe a transformation and, and yourself, like, like for me at, at my family, my family gatherings, you know, since I've always been the kid, it's not like I've had very many responsibilities and like, cooking, cleaning, cleaning and taking care of the kids or, or whatever that may be. And <clears throat> as, as the years go by, I'll probably try to help out more mm-hmm. every single year. Just like, Hey, what can I do to help? How can I serve? Um, and just love people well. And, and <clears throat> I think taking, you know, the initiative to, to, um, just be really, really grateful that I get to, to be here to love these people. Yeah. So do you guys feel like, um, well, I guess a first thought before I ask this next question is, uh, going back to what you said, Connor, it reminds me a lot of the story of like Martha and Mary and how Martha obviously is, you know, going crazy, trying to clean up, trying to get everything prepped because Jesus is here and like, we have a bunch of guests over and we got to make sure that everyone's like taken care of. And, you know, at a glance from a distance, you're like, you know, like Martha's kicking butt over there. Like, if anything, like she's getting praised because she's doing like eight people's jobs probably at once because she's just Mm -hmm. trying to make sure that everything's doing well, you know? 
But then you got Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus and then Martha's like, Mary, like, what are you doing? Like, come and help me. And she was like, nah, Jesus is here. I'm gonna sit at his feet. And like Jesus recognizes Mary and calls out Martha and says like, see what Mary is doing and like have rest because I am here. Just sit and listen because like, you're not gonna have me forever. Um, and so I think the same kind of uh, happens for us is we get like way too stressed out about this stuff. We get, you know, the 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 responsibility one year maybe of like having to host all the family and so then you have to figure out like all right well like what time we're gonna have everybody who's gonna bring stuff like who's gonna be bringing what kind of foods and then like do we you know need to make this or that and then are we doing gifts how many gifts are we doing because some people have massive families and then when it comes to gifts you're like this isn't the normal like three gifts you give your kids now this is like i have 20 grandchildren (laughs) you're like what do they each get like five bucks in an envelope i feel bad for my grandparents because my family's ridiculously large yeah Same. yeah sometimes i mean like my family is i think they've got it off pretty easy because we don't have a very large family on either side so not a lot there but like on Alyssa's side there's a lot of family a lot of family yeah um we would so, go to like six different christmas things that's just crazy because we would have like the individual grandparents and like the big family gatherings yeah and then our own (laughs) it's just it's so fascinating to think about that there are so many different experiences that happen at christmas because i think that what happens is we we live in you know this kind of a bubble and like obviously like when we do christmas we only see one or two christmases happen maybe like we don't get to see what the rest of the world's doing on this day and so We don't see the families where they don't have presents to give their kids. Um, We see the families where they have presents, but it's not the ones that the kids want. And so the kids are upset because they wanted something specific, but parents couldn't afford it. Oh, sweet. An avocado. (laughs) Thanks. I I wish. If we all had the same mindset as that child, this world would be a much better place. Yeah. We're not very grateful individuals. We have a lot of entitlement. Um, Yeah, nowadays, like, six-year-olds are like, I want the iPhone 13 and not just the Pro. I want the Pro Max. (laughs) So, I mean, we live in a culture that's way different from back in the days when it's like, I want a bicycle. I want a new football. I want a new doll set. Now he's like, where's my VR? I want to get in the meta. <laughs> <laughs> I just want a dirt bike. That's also expensive. <laughs> that is, yeah, that, that ain't cheap to come by. No. Um, so obviously there's there's so many different experiences that we have. So my question to you guys is, do you think more good or bad has come out of creating so much of this holiday that creates now a set of expectations in a day that really causes like some people amazing right if you have a stable job stable income you know a house a healthy family all those kind of things you got a great christmas right you're gonna have a good time you'll have family you'll have presents you'll do the whole nine yards but for the people outside of that where they don't have a job right now especially after the pandemic especially like there's there's this there's this huge wave now of like people leaving jobs but i think a lot of them are actually like younger like 18 to 28 year old kids and it's leaving like middle minimum wage jobs um and I think this actually ties into what we were talking about, about how, uh, what would you say, like 50% of... Uh, 43% of 18 and 29 year olds live at home with their parents. Yeah. So there's there's like room for them to be able to do that because they're not living independently anymore. So anyways, uh, the point is, is that um, like there is, you know, so much like economically that's been impacting families. And so do you guys think that Christmas has more good than harm or do you think that Christmas because of what we've made of it has is brought more harm into society as a whole as far as like the expectations of like what Christmas needs to be or is this or is that too big of a question that needs to be to the individual and the family I think oh go ahead Christian oh, oh um all together I think <laughs> <laughs> uh I think it definitely boils down to the individual but I think that also we can we can't put a lot of responsibility on the shoulders of, um, well, in some regards, like marketing and advertising, essentially the the billions of dollars of marketing campaigns that we've been influenced by growing up around the holiday season. Um, what do you mean? I just saw like, Santa driving a Mercedes to someone's house to drop off a present. <laughs> You're not buying a Mercedes this season? No, I don't. I don't Unreal. think so. Yeah, because of that, I won't be happy. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've decided to be sad, um, which is which is a bummer. But also, like we purchase the things to give those companies the ability to do those advertisements. 
Um, that's just kind of how it works. But yeah, so that's kind of my two cents. I don't know about you guys, but there are so many options out there when it comes to apparel. In fact, studies show that there are approximately 96,000 different apparel companies just in the US alone. How in the world do you pick? For most, they find a few companies they like and they stick to that. I've been the same way all my life. It's actually only recently that I really had a change in heart and perspective about it. The majority of the apparel companies source their products from China, which is known for their child labor and sweatshops. Most major companies go there for their manufacturing just to get the cheapest rates to make a higher profit. When you dig into these companies, you realize that they really don't care about you. They care about their profits. They care about their reputation and always lean into what is popular to the secular world. My question is, why do we support these companies? Does it bring God glory? This is why Ask Us Why exists. We started this company with a few thoughts in mind. One, create apparel that actually has meaning and purpose behind it. Two, source our products domestically, ethically, and hand make them ourselves. And three, create a true community around it. Our apparel is always designed to do one of three things. Share the gospel, encourage the believer, and start the conversation. We even include videos for each drop to share the story behind it. On top of that, every person who buys from our shop gets added to our private Discord chat. We exist to help you and your faith continue to grow with community and discipleship. So instead of supporting the giants that don't care about you and only care about a higher profit, support small Christ-centered businesses who actually care about you, who want to know you and support you in your walk with Jesus. Head to our shop over at askuswhyshop.com to check out our archive of designs and new releases. If you want to learn more about Ask Us Why and the different projects that we have, you can head over to our main website at askuswhy.org. Your support means the world to us, and we hope that together we can grow the kingdom. Uh, just quickly off what you said, I think one thing that's cool that I think, like, I forget who like told my mom about this, but we were going to do a, like, instead of doing presents, like for Christmas, we were mm-hmm. just going to do like a trip together, like as a family, yeah. which I think should be more normal. Yeah. Um, not that, not that because inherently presents are bad, but I think it leads to things that, you know, <clears throat> like greed and covetousness. Yeah. Um, but I think if if more families were to do that and be able to spend time together, um, and be able to like kind of delay the gratif- instant gratification of like presents every single day on the same day, mm-hmm. uh, that could be huge for people. Um, but obviously, if like you don't have a gospel mindset about that either like that can be something that is bad too. So I yeah. think like with the original question um I think that the the gospel message will always you know <clears throat> um be heard by those who want to hear it and whose hearts are softened to the message. Um and I think that I think that uh, the American, you know, uh, society and Americanized Christianity and all these things have done, um, <clears throat> negative things to impact, um, not the message cause the message can never be negatively impact. I think the gospel is always good and yeah. always, you know, pure, but I think the way that we're able to see it clearly mm-hmm. is impacted for the things that like get put in front of our faces, in front of our eyes. Um, and so I think that has negatively impacted how we see the gospel and how we see the birth of Christ and how important that is. And I don't think that's been helped with how, you know, our society has, has shaped Christmas and shaped the holidays. Yeah. But I do think that, um, the gospel message will be preached no matter what, um, Mm -hmm. which is is first of all a good thing to hear, but also it gives us responsibility as Christ followers to continue to, to realize that and continue to know that that is the true meaning of what we're doing. Yeah. Um, not only just Christmas season, Mm -hmm. it Christmas season should be like a exemplified opportunity for us, like in that way, especially with family and close friends that we see, um, to be able to share that. But it should also be a daily thing year round, mm-hmm. um, and I think Christmas can be like a almost like a, a renewal, a renewal or a revival of like what yeah. the start of like <clears throat> this this story like was with Christ. Yeah. Um, 
but I think it gets drowned out by a lot of things with our right. society. Yeah, I, it's uh, Christmas is one of the like one of the two holidays that has like the highest season of turnout for church attendance, right? Because families all across the board, for the most part, will be like, "Well, we got to go to church," and it's just like the habit. They haven't been in a while; it's a time for them to come back. Mm -hmm. So usually, you see a spike in attendance on like the Christmas time, Christmas Eve, and then the other time you see it is around Easter. Those are like the two times of the year that you really see. The most coming out of it. Or if it's an extremely like conservative patriotic church, it would be the fourth of July. But outside of that, <laughs> the, the uh I'm just messing. Uh but the the two those are like the two main like holidays. So Christmas is absolutely a time where like the message is being preached, but I think that we're just like it's going into one ear and it's just going out the other because like I guarantee you half of them are like in that church service just thinking about what they gotta do outside of church. What do they gotta get done before people come over? Like they're still in the Martha mindset. Martha mindset. Whoa. Ooh. Whoa. Preach, sister. Pre <laughs> Put it on a shirt. <laughs> Put it on a shirt. Martha mindset, uh, which is wrong. So maybe like a zero and, and then like a cross, cross through, through it. it. Yeah. Mm. That'd be kind of funny. Um, so yeah, like I think that, you know, we're we're trying to preach this message. And obviously, like, you know, it's it's all a matter of the Holy Spirit and like God moving in them. So it's not a matter of like, we're not saying the right words. Um but definitely like it can be frustrating because the enemy really wants to distract us. Right. I think of, I think of Satan as like the real Grinch of Christmas. Cause if yeah. the best way for him to steal Christmas is for us to just think nothing about Christ during, during it. Um, but one thing I do think that is, is very fascinating is, is, um, the idea and concept of Advent. Do you guys know what like Advent is about? Yeah. <laughs> I know the Advent calendar. Did you guys grow up with that big calendars? Getting a tiny chocolate. <laughs> that was the only thing I remembered was the chocolate. And the, the chocolate. advent calendar chocolates were never like they weren't tasted that like real chocolate yeah. for some reason. But it was, I still ate it. It was it was always like diluted with something <laughs> it was some like skim chocolate. milk or something. They just yeah. made a weird version of it. Probably because yeah. it was stuck in a calendar. Yeah. That, for like a whole month. That could be a reason why. <laughs> or a year or two before. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, there's there's a lot of um there's a lot of different things behind it, but the purpose of Advent, Advent in and of itself, the word means arrival. And so it's, it's a lot more practiced in like Lutheran and Methodist and like Catholic, um, uh, churches versus it's not as prominent, in like evangelical and Protestant. You might find it here and there, but usually it's kind of a, it's very limited as far as what they do. Um, but the idea is obviously it's anti anticipation of the arrival of Jesus, but <laughs> At the same time, it's also the anticipation of the returning of Christ because that's ultimately what we await at this moment, right? Like Jesus yeah. already came. He did everything that he needed to do and on the cross and ascended obviously to heaven. And this is the time where we are anticipating a return. And so um, even more than just like getting excited for a birthday to celebrate, like our mindset needs to be on like, you know, like Jesus is going to come back. And I will say, though, that I feel like as of this past year, I've seen more social media posts about the end of times than ever before. Half of them tied to conspiracy theories, half of them tied to just like incorrect translation and interpretation of the scriptures, mm -hmm. being a dispensationalist. And it always um, has been. <laughs> and so uh, I don't think that we we are lacking by any means in this whole second coming of Christ at the moment. But uh, it definitely has to do with the mindset of being like, hey, like Christ is going to return. Like, what are you doing with your time right now? Yeah. And we don't know if he's going to come back tomorrow, if he's going to come back next week or in 50 years. We don't we have no idea. But like we we can't lose that mindset of this is still going to happen regardless. And and like we need to be doing what we can with the time that we do have because we don't know when the hour and day will come. Um, so a uh, final question for us, just kind of wrap up these thoughts is, is what can we do? What can we do differently for this season to try and uh, help with all of the stress that we got going on? Like, let's say we got moms that are stressed out cause it's just a crazy season or there's, you know, these high expectations for um, how like a, an event has to go or hosting goes, or maybe it's, you know, for us as individuals, it's like, what, what can we be doing in this holiday season to try and like alleviate some of that stress that comes with certain individuals during the season? Um, but then for others, just the mindset and distraction from what true Christmas should be about. Um, I know this is difficult because 
there's family traditions. There's all these things that like, you know, your specific family might have done for, you know, the past however many years. Yeah. Um, but I do think it could be a helpful like challenge for people who actually like, you know, for however many of those how many, however many of those years their family has been doing these traditions to maybe be like, okay, I understand that this is a family tradition mm-hmm. and I understand that those can be good things, but has it turned it into something that is a chore and that gives us more, you know, stress and anxiety than, Headaches, yeah. than, than that's helpful and mm-hmm. that's, that's restful. And so maybe there's families that like need to just have, you know, a relaxing, christmas and not have to prepare food you know for three days in advance um to where everybody's just stressed out of their eye like their minds and pulling out the hair and all these things so i know that's difficult because some people could be disappointed with traditions being you know broken or whatever that means yeah but i think being able to explain why we are taking a step back from certain things if if that's the case can be even more of an opportunity to explain the, the meaning of, of Christmas and Christ. Mm-hmm. And I think another thing is praying for opportunities um, and being able to see opportunities that come about mm-hmm. when you're with family and friends, um, you know, wherever you do your holidays and Christmas and Thanksgiving and being able to act upon those opportunities because we can pray for God to show us opportunities to, you know, share the gospel or to um, listen to people's hurt and all of these things. But if we don't, don't act upon those opportunities, then they're missed. And uh, I think just a practical uh, example of this is for some reason, it's the weirdest thing. And I've probably (laughs) talked to you guys about this before, but my family always looks to myself to me to like pray before meals in major holidays. Pasta cana. That's right. Don't they say like, aren't you like the holiest here or something like that? And I always am like, guys, that is not how it works. (laughs) But the prayers of a righteous man are powerful. (laughs) So uh, it's, I be extra blessed this year. I enjoy doing it, but I also like want them to know that they can do this. Like they can have a relationship with Christ just as much as anybody else, including myself, can. And yeah. I think there's this there's this misconception of like, okay, I went to school, you know, I have a bachelor's in theology, which doesn't mean a whole lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm still an idiot. But I think there's there's this there's this misconception of like, okay, let's have Connor do the prayer every single Thanksgiving, every single Christmas before we eat. And it's not even just at like one house. Like for some reason it's like Every single place I go, they're like, Connor, pray before we eat. And I'm like, guys, why don't we just like have somebody else do it this time? Like, I'm happy to, but like, I want everybody to be able to have a relationship with Christ. And so for a while, like I was frustrated at that. And I was like, like, God, why, why can't somebody else just do this? Yeah. I feel not put on the spot, but I'm like frustrated that they're not like getting this. Mm -hmm. Um, And recently I've realized that like that's an opportunity the Lord has given me to like not only just preach a sermon during your prayer, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> I do, <laughs> I do try and like, I don't pray for, you know, a super long time because people would get frustrated because it's, mm-hmm. I'm time. hungry. Um, <laughs> but I do try and, you know, make it substantial enough to where people might have questions after of like, you know, people who don't, hear the gospel message or don't fully understand it. And so, especially with Christmas and, you know, people's mindset of being, you know, Americanized Christmas of not truly understanding the meaning, being able to pray and thank God for that true meaning, um, gives me more opportunities to talk about that after. Um, and I think that's just one, like, practical example of like if that opportunity comes like don't be upset about it yeah like don't be upset about okay what if i say the wrong things or Mm. sometimes it's just listening to like relatives or family that like has been hurt Mm. whether it be like from people in the church or they've had a really hard year yeah like i think a lot of times with 
major holidays when people come back together, it, it can be sometimes after like a death in the family, mm. which <clears throat> is, is hard, but it's also like a really good opportunity for you to be there for those people who probably haven't really, you know, had, had somebody to talk to that has just listened to them and been able to, um, you know, share empathy, um, like Christ would with them. And I think the opportunities, if you pray for them are like everywhere, yeah. especially in this season, but we're so caught up with, oh, I'm frustrated at this person. I don't want to talk to this person. What if they talk to me about conspiracy theories and all of these political things? Right. And it's like, just be there. Like you don't have to engage in uh, negative conversation with people. You can just listen. But Uncle Bill wants to talk politics. <laughs> and like, I gotta, I gotta say something. That's hard. And it's like, Especially when you like know, like that's absolutely ridiculous. Why would you think those things? Like, <laughs> like why do you think you know lizard people are controlling the world or whatever? It is? <laughs> like, just the most outrageous things. Well, I'll send you sources, bro. I have articles yeah, of bread, yeah, okay. Yeah. But no, I think, <laughs> I think even if you're able to just listen and like let them go through those things, like they probably haven't had somebody just be silent. They've probably had people just you know, telling them they're stupid in that all of these things and Probably they haven't been able Facebook to just arguments. get it all out. Like just let them talk through it. And then if you, if they actually be quiet and, you know, for lack of better words, shut up about it, then you can actually, <laughs> you know, share, share, you know, your, your thoughts on whatever that is or, yeah. you know, why you have differing thoughts, hopefully if it's something crazy. You right. Know? Yeah, engaging in that kind of conversation is definitely not easy. Um, and it gets even more difficult when you choose to respond. Because um, if you say the wrong thing, it might tick them off. Or if you try to say the right thing and it doesn't come out the right way or whatever, then it just engages in a conversation that could turn to something much worse. And that's not really the idea is to have a Christmas full of like debate where you're sitting down with your loved ones and having to talk about you know some conspiracy theory or something crazy going on in the world because they want to like voice their opinions. So... Um, yeah, I think that's, that's, that's good advice that we need to, um, do the best we can to be slow to speak, slow to, to anger, um, but quick to listen as we were reminded in James, um, to kind of just let that sit out for family members. Cause I'm sure that, you know, again, like you were saying, like some of them probably never had someone to, um, to talk to about it. And, uh, I think what's crazy is, is when you actually look at the studies of people that hold to like these crazier ideas versus some people that are kind of just in the middle with it, um, it's really the it's really just the few that have the crazy politics. Really, um, that's all we see on social media. That's all we see on media, and that's mm -hmm. because the algorithms are made to feel that because it's what you want you, they want you to think. But more often than not, like we have way more common ground with like our brother and sister than we think. But the problem is, is that we only make really big the topics that we might have differing views on. Um, and so, I think it would be just good if 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 those conversations happen, and we, you know, you do have to engage in them. Um, to just find common ground before anything else and be like, listen, might have a different view on this, but like, oh, like agree to disagree. Um, but like, where do we have common ground with things that matter to us and what are important? Um, and then leave that as like an opportunity to present the gospel in a way that is loving and gracious and open to them. And, um, you might get someone that says, yes, you might get someone that says, no, I don't want to talk about that crap, but either way you're planting seeds. It's not about the results. It's about just being obedient to Christ. And so, um, remembering that you, you have that example to, to live out as a Christian, um, can be huge during the holiday season. Christian, do you have anything you want to add to that? Yes. Um, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. I think, <clears throat> first off like these these conversations that you have with your aunts your uncles all these people that that are coming around um are these these one off usually pretty short conversations that you have once a year um and just like <clears throat> just like any any other exchange with with people um they're going to remember how you made them feel not necessarily the content of the conversation mm, there's um, a good quote on that and and so don't don't feel like first off don't feel like a lot of a lot of pressure to 
say the right thing because you're not going to be the one to like move their heart like the Holy Spirit can. Um, and I also would, would say to, to really just love them the best way that you can and know how. Um, for me, that's just being genuinely interested in their lives and asking them questions about like, you know, it's been the hardest part of your year. Um, might be a really good question because then they'll just be able to talk about like something that was really difficult for them. And you can share like, oh man, like, I'm so sorry. Like, that's really hard. Um, you know, and, and explain it in, in a different light through like how Jesus would perceive it or, Mm -hmm. or just like showing empathy. Like people don't always get that or, or like, um, you know, honoring people for things that you see that they're doing good, you know, because a lot of people, it, I, it would be very easy for for us as Christians to like feel like we sit on this high horse and be like, mm, like I see like they're doing this, they're doing this, but people don't, they don't receive a lot of encouragement in their day-to-day lives. And if we're someone who can be like, oh man, like you went through that, that must have been really hard. I just I want to honor you and like sticking with like that hard job or or persevering through you know, being jobless because of COVID or A, B, C, or D, um, that's going to, number one, like leave them feeling good about the conversation that you had. And um, it is going to be like loving and make just make it genuine, make it sincere. Um, and there's, you know, so many different ways to have conversations and do different things and, you know, find your own take and, and roll with it and just love them well. Yeah. And there's also going to be families that don't have to deal with this. Like for myself included, I don't know if I have family that, that, I mean, I do have family that really sit on a very different political point, but we don't do like holidays really with them anymore. Um, so I don't really have for my, myself, the, like the concern going into the holidays that like, that's something that like I need to be prepared for. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I, I know there's people that are listening to this that are probably in the same boat where they don't have to worry about that. Um, and so I think that my encouragement for all parties of the matter is that education is extremely important on this. Um, like I think that when it comes to Christmas, getting distracted, doing the presents, doing all these things, we think that, you know, the, the cure of it is like, get rid of it, just be done with it or, or go to some kind of extreme. Or, um, we sit forever twiddling our thumbs cause we're like, we don't really know what to do. Uh, either way, I think that, that educating ourselves on like why we celebrate this is I think what's most important. And so like, do you guys know any of like the symbols of like the symbolism behind the things that we do with Christmas? Like, do you guys know any of the things and like why we do them as far as like, like Christmas traditions that are kind of universal? Like presents, presents, Christmas tree lights, all that kind of stuff. So no. this I is mean, presents. I would, I would only think like, Oh, three, three wise men brought gifts. Yeah, you know? no, that's legitimately part of the, part of the reason for that. Okay. So yeah, I mean like one, the star that goes on top of a tree is supposed to symbolize the great star or some people claim the Northern star mm. that basically led the magistrates to Jesus. Mm. Um, lights and lighting candles has to do with like symbolizing that Jesus is the light of the world. Um, Christmas presents has to do with the magistrates, but also the greatest gift that we have received, which was the birth of Jesus, which then leads to ultimately the gift of salvation because of his death and sacrifice and resurrection. Mm -hmm. Um, Evergreens and like wreaths have to do with um, the eternal salvation that we receive the everlasting love from God. Um, there's, there's a lot that, that we kind of go into with that. And so I think that especially, especially for parents, I don't know how many people listen to this that are parents, but like educating our kids about why we celebrate these things. Because if the mindset is, oh, Christmas, that's the season where I get gifts, then that's all they're going to think about for the Christmas season versus, oh, Christmas, this is the time when Jesus is being celebrated because he has come. And maybe for some that's, man, I haven't been to church in a while and I probably should come back to it. And that's an amazing opportunity for the church to, to do what they can to pull people in. Um, and then, you know, for others, it's, oh, like this is something that I need to, you know, maybe 
you know, think more about because I have a really wacky family situation as far as like traditions and everything that we do. But um, regardless, there's there's a lot of meaning that we can find within Christmas because I I mean, it, unless you really think that you can just get rid of Christmas, then sure, go for it if you want to. But for most of us, it's still going to exist. We're still going to participate in these things. And so like having a mindset shift in it of like throughout the day that like, hey, like today, today, like even though like we, I think we're all on the same page here that like Jesus was not born on tw- December 25th. Some Christians, actually probably a lot, probably don't really realize that. Um, the, uh, the, the, his actual birthday, I think the most think that it was around like the springtime is when like it actually, he like came around. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, it's like a day as a symbol to remember this. And so you can, you can do all these things and it not be you participating in some kind of pagan tradition and people being like, Oh, we don't celebrate Christmas because it's pagan tradition. It's like, I don't think that anybody has the mindset when they put a present under the Christmas tree for their, their family member that like they're participating in a pagan tradition. They're just like, no, I want to put a Christmas present on the tree for you because I want to give you a gift. Um, but I think that if we don't shift our mindset, we get this sense of entitlement and this sense of stress and anxiety um, because this is the season where I got to buy my gifts for everybody and I got to make sure all this is, you know, set to go. And, um, you know, I wouldn't say like lessen the gifts, but I think that the problem is, is that now that we've made this the standard, that's what makes it so stressful is because this is the expectation now. So for a mom who has to host the event and she has four kids and she has, you know, <clears throat> two of them have kids themselves now. So now you're a grandparent and your parents, then you have, you know, gifts that are all over the place and you're hosting for the event and you have all these different things you have to take care of. Then like for, for moms and dads, like sometimes it's the most stressful time of the year. And it's like, I don't think that's what God like wants it to be for us. It can be so much more. So um, I think the situation looks different for everybody. It really is by the individual and it really is going to take a lot of effort and a lot of prayer and, and, and the biggest thing out of everything, because you can, you can try and take a cookie cutter answer from us and try and apply it. And it probably won't work. Like it's not going to work for everybody. Mm -hmm. But what does work is always praying for wisdom and revelation from God, because when we seek wisdom, God gives freely of that. And Mm -hmm. so that's, what's going to help us discern. How do I like navigate this season? What can I change about our methods? What can I change about our traditions that we do? God, give me discernment and conviction. If this is something that, you know, I've been doing wrong for a long time, because in all reality, I think that a lot of people that have gone down this path of making so much of Christmas probably aren't close in their relationship with Jesus. And and I'm not going to like there could be people that are. But I think that like when we have the Holy Spirit within us, it convicts us of things that we know are wrong. And so if we're not seeing that at face value, even for the things that we do that have now become idols in our lives of like worship that like take priority over we got to go to church. It's like, I, I don't have time to go to church. I got to be making food all day. And it's like, wow, like that's where you have to draw the line of what is more important in this situation. And it's not to say that church has to be at a building, but it's, you know, the, the idea, right? So um, to each individual, I think the best thing that you guys can do in this season that all of us can do, honestly, is to seek prayer and, and wisdom and revelation from God as Paul prays for continually in all of his epistles, you see it over and over and over again. Those are the two things that he prays for. Um, and so when we receive that wisdom, that's where we receive the guidance on how we should go about our Christmas season. But we have to have that mindset of wanting to seek that in order for us to find that. Because if we're not looking for that or wanting to change things up or trying to have a better better posture towards the season, some of us, we probably got it good. We already, like, we're doing everything fine. Like, sure, hallelujah. Like, great season. You guys are awesome. You're, you're already kicking butt. But for the majority of people, there's usually problems or conflicts that we experience during the holiday season, whether it be with family members, whether it be with politics, whether it be with driving back and forth from places, whether it be with um, economic status and not being able to afford presents or, you know, do certain things. Um, or maybe it's that you've lost a loved one. And so now you're, you're spending Christmas for the first time with someone else. Um, there's a lot of mixed emotions that can go into it. But I think that what matters most is is clinging to God in this season because he does want to give you rest. He wants to give you peace. He wants to give you hope. Um, and you can only receive those things if you're seeking God for those and abiding in the spirit. So yeah. Um, you guys got anything else you want to add? Some little uh, tidbits of wisdom for people in this holiday season? Merry mindset, bro. Merry mindset. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, uh, don't try to control your relatives. Like if they're stressed out, you're not going to be able to make them not stressed out. 
Um, but you can be an example of being restful and peaceful in a chaos time. Yeah. Love it. Well, you can check out our shop at askuswhyshop.com and you can go buy one of our Mary Mindset t-shirts. Um, Bro, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you think about it. It's like, you know, Mary, like M-E-E-R-Y. That's what I was thinking. And like crossed mm. out and like Mary, you know? Yeah. Or something like brilliant. that. Brilliant. Quite brilliant. Mindset. Genius. We just had a think tank and that was brilliant. Brainstorms. Brainstorms. Uh, but as an actual fact, you guys are probably listen to this on, well, I would hope you're listening to this on Monday because on Monday we do an Asaiba Monday deal on the website. So 30% off the whole store. You got to go over there and check it out. Yeah. Buy everything out. We're doing a, we're doing a pop-up shop at GCU. So I'm kind of like, oh no, am I going to have nothing to bring with me or am I going to have a lot of stuff? It just depends. Depends if you guys are going to take advantage of the deal or not. But anyways, we hope that this episode was beneficial for you guys. I know it was a little bit different, but we just want to encourage you guys in this holiday season to um, make sure we don't lose sight of what truly matters most. I think I, I have a quote or something I was going to put out. that says like, remember the true meaning of Christmas, um, presence over presence. So like presence is in like your present um, versus like the gifts that we get. Um, so make sure that you guys are are staying staying true to what uh, we are called to as Christians in this season. We aren't becoming a different person because we have so many stresses and expectations and standards within family and traditions that we have to do. Um, don't lose sight of God more than anything else. Cling to your relationship with him and uh, seek wisdom and revelation and he will make your path straight. So with that being said, if you guys enjoyed this episode, if it was beneficial, share it with a friend, share it with your mama, share it with everybody you know, uh, and make sure you like it. You can subscribe on our YouTube channel. You can hit that notification bell so you get notifications when we drop an episode every Monday at 3 p.m. And uh, we uh, we hope you guys uh, have a beautiful rest of your day. Yeah. Happy Christmas. Peace. Our Chrysler. Bye.